Good morning, everybody. Now, Russia is laughing at the West again because the Western leaders have decided to do something new, which they say is going to hurt Putin and Russia, but is actually going to backfire very, very badly on the West and the leaders and the economies of the West and tragically, uh, the people of the West. And if it wasn't so tragic, it would be funny. So what Ursula von der Leyen and other Western leaders have done with the G7 uh, leaders as well, obviously, the European Union is, uh, is buying into this. So all the countries of the European Union are affected as well, is that they've set a price cap for oil purchases from Russia at $60 a barrel. Now, the market price for oil, uh, I've just looked, is about $80 per, per barrel. So the G7 countries and the EU uh, and Australia as well is joining in are saying that they're not going to buy Russian oil unless Russia sells it to them for uh, three quarters of the market price. And Putin has just said, well, we're not going to sell you any oil then. But they actually think that this is going to force Russia's hand uh, and they're going to be forced to sell oil below market price. And therefore, this is somehow fighting uh, Putin's war, as they call it. Uh, what's actually going to happen is Russia is just going to sell the oil to China and India and African countries and Arab countries because they have uh, more markets around the world than uh, Europe. And this is the tragedy of the situation, is that the Western leaders are just so stupid uh, and they're so entrenched in this position of supporting the Zelensky regime in Ukraine, which is, is a terrible regime, absolutely terrible regime. It's been killing ethnic Russians in the Donbass region for eight years or so, and Putin has gone in to defend the ethnic Russians and stop them from being killed. But they are still supporting uh, the Zelensky regime and sending billions of pounds of money and weapons to prolong a completely unnecessary conflict. And the Western leaders are also uh, trying to fight this economic war as well, uh, as well as damaging Russian infrastructure, which has backfired on the West too. So obviously we know two big attacks happened uh, on Russian infrastructure. There was the Nord Stream pipeline bombing, uh, which stopped the flow of Russian gas to Germany. Uh, so therefore there's no possibility whatsoever of Germany and other uh, Western Central European countries from receiving gas from Russia to keep their industry going and to keep their power systems up. Um, the, the investigators from Sweden, uh, where whose territorial waters uh, the attack took place on the Nord Stream pipeline, said, well, they, they, they found out that it was an explosion but they're not saying any more about who did it. So it's pretty uh, clear that the chief suspects, I hate to say this, the chief suspects in the blowing up of the Nord Stream pipeline in my own country, the United Kingdom and the United States, uh, which is absolutely an appalling state uh, of affairs and that should never, ever have happened. Um, the other attack on Russian infrastructure that happened was the bombing of the, the Kirsch Bridge in Crimea, the bridge that links Crimea to the Russian mainland. And then now after that, uh, the G7 countries are now coming in and saying we're going to have more sanctions on Russia. The ones that they've already placed haven't worked. Um, the Russian ruble has been the strongest currency in the world uh, this year. It went down for a couple of weeks and then it bounced back up and way higher than what it was before the Ukraine conflict started. They have they are now getting more money for their oil and gas because after uh, the EU and, and the G7 countries said they weren't going to buy it, uh, the price went up and they found new markets 
uh, around the world. And this is the arrogance of some of the people there who are the leaders in the G7 uh, countries and the, the EU countries. They think that um, they're the only market in the world that, that, that what they say can go. Uh, actually, there is a much bigger world than the West. I, I want the West to succeed. I think the history of the West and civilization is wonderful and beautiful, of course, and I want us to build on our heritage. But we're not going to be building on our heritage and, and going forward and um, prospering as a society, as a civilization, if we continue to stoke up tensions around the world with other countries, um, and particularly at this time uh, with Russia. I actually went into Parliament um, uh, earlier this week, and uh, Port Cullis House is on the parliamentary estate. It's, it's, not, it's across the road uh, from um, the Palace of Westminster, where the, the Commons and the Lords are, you see on the television, but it's connected by a tunnel. And when I went in there, there is a whole big block of so-called artwork, and it says on it, Russian war crimes. And this is the message that the powers that be in the UK are actually uh, propagandizing and promoting all the time. They're promoting this idea that uh, Russia's bad, Zelensky's good, when there's far, far more to the situation than this. And then that gives them the justification to carry on prolonging the war and putting sanctions on Russia, which don't hurt Russia, but they hurt the West. But who benefits from all this? The arms manufacturers and the, the globalist companies who uh, set to make money out of the money laundering schemes that um, involve Ukraine. Not least this FTX exchange that just went down, uh, taking three billion pounds of customers' money. Uh, it seems there that uh, a lot of that money was uh, given to Ukraine, went into this exchange and then went back to the Democratic Party in the United States to help them win elections. So there is clear evidence um, of money laundering uh, going on in Ukraine. It's a corrupt cesspit and we shouldn't be giving more money and weapons to support it. What we should be doing is de-escalating the situation, lifting the sanctions on Russia so that Western European countries can buy Russian oil and gas the market price will go down in a free market and then we can keep the lights on and then people are not going to go cold and dark this winter and businesses are not going to close and go bankrupt as they are already doing uh, in their thousands in Germany. Uh, so the situation is a tragedy for Western Europe brought about by the incompetence and intransigence of the globalist leaders of the G7 and the EU.